Welcome to Adorama TV. My name is Marcin Lewandowski, and in this episode of the Viewfinder, I'm going to look at how to approach a brief in a structured way. I will share with you a few thoughts worth considering and questions worth asking when working on a client's brief. When I look at my hazy beginnings as a photographer, I thought about jobs in terms of showing up with my camera and firing away. While some of the jobs might require just that, especially those with a documentary angle, they still need a certain amount of preparation, even if it's just looking up the location and list of expected guests to see who is who at the opening gala and making sure we don't miss anyone of importance, etc. There are a few ways to receive and discuss a brief, and the email is still most people's preferred choice, mostly due to its flexibility, simplicity in sharing ideas and a chance to come back to notes, etc. When a brief is agreed in writing, the expectation on both sides is much more clear and transparent, always good when your client changes their mind after a shoot. It's good practice to always have as much as possible in writing, whether working on a personal idea, exchanging information with client, or simply gathering notes for future inspiration. A great way to discuss expectations is to create a mood board or at least exchange some images over email. This will allow you to start thinking in terms of the look and feel and point you towards choosing appropriate locations, figuring out travel, logistics, but also thinking about required lighting, potential props, preferred times and other technicalities. I find Pinterest a really handy tool for storing links to photographs from across the web. Boards can be easily shared and it's automatically synced across different devices. As much as Pinterest and mood boards in general can work fantastically for more conceptual work, like creating images for film posters or arts or fashion, this might not be of too much help when working on assignments such as architectural or landscape projects. On projects like that, I always start with Google Maps to assess the general situation like distances, etc. and almost straight away turn on the street view, if it's available. This gives me a much better idea on access and a feel for the location, even if it's miles away. A thing you should do without fail, and I do without even thinking now, is look at photographs that are already in existence. Thanks to the digital photography revolution, most of the places on our planet are already photographed. And even if these photographs are not of high artistic merit or a professional standard, they usually offer a good alternative to Google Maps images and very often show us angles that are not available through Street View. One more important step is recce. You should always visit a location if possible. Visiting in person always presents an opportunity to look for interesting angles and to better understand distances and highlight any possible obstructions such as roadworks for example. It is good to remember that Google Maps images are only updated every couple of years and the same building or row of trees that you see on your computer might not even exist now. Once these things are out of the way, I will start planning in more detail. When it comes to interiors, it will be mostly access queries and making sure I can get in and out of places whenever I want. For landscape and exteriors, it is all about finding the right balance between the weather forecast, traveling to the location and the right time of the day. Assuming that we can nail the shot on our first approach might be a bit optimistic and so I'm always ready to come back to the location and take more photographs. Another reason to come back to the location, especially one that is close by, is to create something new, different and more experimental. I would not prioritize this over the safe agreed photographs, but if you have an idea, it's worth trying to realize it. You never know, it might be one of the most interesting photographs in the final set. I always like to go with the flow and improvise, so the more prep I do before going on an assignment, the more freedom I have. With each extra bit of knowledge, I exclude unexpected and often nasty surprises, allowing myself to do what I'm best at, photography. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Feel free to share your own experiences in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel for more and have a look at the Adorama Learning Center for photography tips and tutorials. This was Marcin Lewandowski for Drama TV. See you next time.